Hello web developers, uh, welcome to another project walkthrough. This project is the multi-view application project and we're going to work with uh, collecting some data from users using uh, forms and then also uh, redirecting users or just allowing users to click around and move around to different parts of our Vue.js application. So this project is actually totally explained on these two pages of the Practical JavaScript 2 Building Applications book. So here is here are the review uh, the, the first part where it just is about the form fields in the home.view file and then uh, the second part that takes you through some more form stuff and then also the routing stuff that we're going to do. So uh, if we take a look here, uh, this is the repo and um, if we look at the requirements for the repository, we can see that we have basically four files here, home.view, survey.view, secret.view, and index.js that we're going to edit. And, um, and we're basically going to create a signup form that then allows, once a user completes the signup form and it's valid, then they're presented with a link where they can go to fill out the new user survey. Um, once they fill out the new user survey, they get uh, transported to um, the uh, secret page where they get a secret tip um, for web development. So <laughs> this is sort of like the kinds of processes that we create a lot on websites where we have people uh, give data in a form, we need to validate it. Once uh, that, that data is valid, then we're able to do something with it. We either redirect to a different place or we provide linkage to a different place, we create a new thing in the system, something along those lines. So in general, this is similar to what we might do on any number of, of websites or applications. Uh, to get going on it, we're going to fork our repository into our personal GitHub area. And that will allow us to just do our work and publish our results like normal. We um, will then clone our repository. So I'm going to copy out the uh, URL and I'm going to run clone to make a copy of this repo locally. And then I'm going to go... If I can type correctly, I'm going to go into that directory. And now, as I know, with all Vue.js apps, um, when I clone the repo, I need to do an npm install. So I'll go ahead and do an npm install. And when that's finished, we'll um, continue on. All right. npm has definitely gotten faster lately. So that's great. 969 packages in 12.664 seconds. Uh, speedy installation. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do is just open up my files. Um, I use the sublime command to do that, and uh, I can um, let me let me size our window here so that we have something that works within the video, <laughs> and um, and we can look at the files that we have here, and then of course I can also uh, go ahead and run the dev server so that we can see what things look like from the very beginning. Um, as we uh, look at this, what we'll see is that we have no form, we have a submit button, and then we have the thank you for signing up message, which is showing all at once. So obviously, this is not the way that we want our um, application to look, you know, uh, in the end. So um, let's go in here. Uh, so we looked at the README already, and we, we saw that, you know, we start with this home view, survey view secret view and index.js. So let's just kind of take a look at those. So the router index.js is right there. And that's that's cool. Um, we can notice in components, we actually only have home and survey. Um, to do secret, we're actually going to create that component um, from scratch. So we'll take a look at how to how exactly to do that. Um, we'll probably just copy one of the other views and then um, and then do it from there. Um, so that's that's great. We could also use uh, a page out of the book um, where it has the default uh, component boilerplate that we could copy out and we could use that um, as well to create that file. Uh, so let's, um, in general, if we open up these files, what we're going to see is that we have all of the to-dos here. Uh, just like all of our projects, you just kind of work through the to-dos and you should be to-done before you know it. Um, if we... Uh, Look in the router file, we've even got to-dos there 
for adding the routes and adding the imports. So we'll, we'll look at that. And, um, and in the survey file, we have the same thing. Um, obviously, in the secret file, we don't have to do's, but that's actually a really simple component that just has to output a message. So, um, so that's, it doesn't, doesn't require too much uh, thinking hard. Um, so that's it. Uh, I think at this point in time, we're basically ready to get moving on this. Um, we're going to jump into home.view and we're going to complete all of these forms and the validation uh, in order to make uh, that, that view work first. Uh, and then we'll work through, um, you know, the survey and the secret, and we'll be probably popping into router uh, the router definitions a couple times to add add the different things along the way. So let's go ahead and get going and uh, see how things work out for us. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is modulate the display of the form container using the show v show and the show form variable. So if we look down here in our data, we can see that we have placeholders for the signup fields, username, email, password, and password verify. Then we have show form and show error. And show form is initialized to true, and show error is initialized to false. So what we want to do is uh, display this. So we just say v show, and then inside of the um, attribute quotation marks, we're going to add a conditional statement that when it is true, it will show this div. So that is going to be um, just show form because show form is either going to be true or false. So uh, just to say show form, that's going to show. If we save that and look at our um, application, nothing's actually changed because we, um, we, we're still showing what was already being shown. Um, but like I mentioned, we, we also want to hide the success message and you see here that it also says to display the success message using V show and the show form variable. So the way that we can do that is again, we want to make a statement that when it is true, it will, um, show this element and all of the elements that it contains. So we can actually say not show form. And what this is going to say is if show form is false, then not show form is true and the, and the message will, will show. So as long as we just adjust the show form to either be true or false, then, uh, then we can control how this shows. And so now we know that show form is initialized to true, which means that not show form is false. So we should see the form, but not the success message anymore. And when we click over to our web browser, it is autom automatically refreshed and we indeed see the form here, but not the success message there. So that won't show up again until we do the validation uh, segment and actually change the value of, of the show form uh, variable in the, the data object here. So um, let's go ahead and move on and see what else we're going to do. So the next thing is... Uh, add an HTML element to display an error message for when the user submits invalid information. Use vshow to show hide this message based on the validity of the form data. And so what we can see is that we do have a show error value here. So we're basically setting up the same thing as uh, the show as we did with show form to actually show and hide the form itself. So what we can say here is uh, we'll make a paragraph and we'll add a vshow directive to it and this will be if show error is true then we will write uh, there are errors in the form uh, data you have submitted please double check your information all fields are required now that's a pretty generic error and we certainly could do a lot better with a form error than that. But I'm going to say, I'm going to leave that for you to work out on the stretch goals because uh, for now, this at least gets the basic concept. We could basically do this for each of the fields and we could really trigger granular error messages that would show up on each of those fields. And so that would be um, super helpful. Uh, we can save that. And what do we expect to see when we click back to the web browser? nothing different because we don't have an error. But if we actually change the value of show error, 
then we should um, we can try it out and just see if it works. So we'll just change the value down here, and then when we click back here, we can see, oh, there are errors in the form data you have submitted. Please double check your information. All fields are required. That's cool, but it doesn't really stand out at all. And I think if we look down here in the styles, we actually have an error class that is already defined in the styles that we can make use of. So let's go ahead and just add the class attribute on here. And if we save that and we come back over here, now we see that this is a nice red box that's going to stand out and be really noticeable. So um, that's excellent. Uh, we're going to go ahead and continue on with things. But before we continue on, we're going to reset show error so that it is initialized to false. Because when we first load the page, we do not have any errors. So uh, that's how that's going to work. Um, we will then add the proper VON directive to let validate form handle this form when it is submitted. So we're going to make um, the validate form method, which we can see is defined down here in the methods property of our component. Um, so validate form is a function that, that we're going to define. And we're going to have to fill it in with all of this um, information here. So uh, we'll, we'll need to get down to that in the file. Um, but then we want to we want to make sure that um, when the form is submitted, this validate form method is actually called. And so to do that, we're going to use the v on. And um, remember that v on always takes an argument, which is the event. And in this case, we want the event to be the submit. And if you recall um, from the the readings in Practical JavaScript 2, um, we want to prevent the default event handlers from firing. We don't want this form to cause the browser to refresh. We don't want the browser to handle submitting the form um, to itself. We want to handle this form with our validate form direct or method. And so to handle it with the validate form method, we need to use that dot prevent in order to prevent the default uh, for event handlers from firing. Then we just need to specify that we want validate form to be called when this form is submitted. So now uh, validate form will definitely be called when this form is submitted. And uh, we can't really test that out yet, um, but we could uh, put in here just a console.log um, validate form, or we'll say validating form and it'll be like a little message and then if we come over here and um, we open up our console here and we actually click submit we can see that we see validating form the message come up and that works uh, pretty great so now we need to add uh, labels for each form field okay that's cool we also need to add a username field an email field a password field and a password verify field so each form field should be in a paragraph and then each one will have a label and then each one is going to be an input and the, the username one will be type equals text uh, and we'll say v model equals uh, username. That's that's what it is down here. We want it to match these names that we've given here. So v model equals username. We'll say placeholder equals um, enter your username here. And that is that's it. And then we're gonna. Go ahead and say slash label slash p to close this up. And now since we wrote the label around the input, it will automatically be um, associated with the input. But we could say uh, for username, and that would be a little bit more specific. And we could also give this the ID username so that we've sort of doubled up on defining that. Um, I'm going to copy this. And uh, so that we already got the username done. We know that we have to add labels. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Um, 
it's really important as you work through these things to get rid of the to-dos. You don't want to leave those in here once you've actually done the stuff. So the next one is going to be email. And we're going to need to change those things. Um, and here instead of, we'll, we'll provide you at example.com is what we'll provide for the placeholder here. And for type, we're actually going to say email also because this will give like mobile devices. We'll get a different keyboard that has the at symbol active on it. Um, it also does a little bit of browser-based validation to make sure that there's an at symbol somewhere in the input. So it actually gives us a little help on the validation as well to use the proper uh, input type. So then um, the next thing that we need is a password field. And I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, multiple cursor. Uh, well, that's for password. And that type is password here. So we really want the, for the password field, we have to use the password type so that we don't actually see the characters we type. We get the little, you know, bullets or whatever. And then we want the password verify field. Um, so that is going to mean changing these to say password verify. And, um, and then we'll say enter your password again. And so now if we save this, we should see all these fields have come up. And they have. So that looks pretty great. Uh, we also can uh, try submitting. And we still see that we've got validating form, but we did not refresh the browser. So we know that our event handler is working properly. So now the next thing that we need to do is really work out this validate form. And the form needs to validate according to these rules. And then when it's done, it needs to show the success message. And if it's invalid, it needs to show the error message. So first of all, let's tackle these rules here. We're going to basically just use a standard conditional. And we're just going to say if. And then we're going to write several conditional statements that we're going to be able to validate. So the first condition that we want to check is that username must not be blank. So we'll say username, this dot username, because remember when we reference uh, data object variables inside of the a method or a created or a uh, computed function, um, then we're going to use the this to refer to this uh, component object. So this dot username uh, is not equal to blank. So that's great. And we're going to use the double ands to say and. And then um, we're going to say this dot email and that's also email must not be blank. So not equal to blank. And this dot password must equal password verify. So we're going to use the three equals there. That's three equals in a row, three equals. And um, that will be this dot password verify. So that is the end of our conditional. If all of those things are true, then the form is valid. So we could say console.log form is valid. And we could say uh, we could say then this dot show form equals false because we no longer want to show the form. We want to show the success message. We can add an else clause to this condition. So if, if that is not valid, if all of the fields are not valid, then we can uh, show the error. So we say this dot show error equals true. And we could also go ahead and log a statement, say form is not valid. Great. So uh, we can get rid of these comments now because we don't need them anymore. We've got all of that written in code and we know what we're doing. We can get rid of this console log because we don't need it anymore. And now we have our validate form. So now when we submit the form, we should actually get real validation. 
So if we if we don't fill anything in and we hit submit, we would expect to see the error, and that's what we see. Excellent. So now if we fill in the uh, the fields properly, then we should be able to submit. And now we see, thank you for signing up. Please take our new member survey. Click here. Excellent. So we now have that all working. The only thing that's not working is the click here. So let's take a peek at how to make that click here. Uh, if we go up here, we got rid of this to do because we made the success message show. But it says, link click here to the survey page. Well, the survey page doesn't actually exist yet. We have a survey component and it's full of to-dos as well, but it basically is there. It has a bunch of data that it can use to populate all of its fields. It also has a validate form method defined um, and you know some, some out of the box styles as well. We need to actually though create a URL. We, currently our application only has one URL and that is the home URL. So we have to go into, um, into the router here and we actually need to add things in. So the first thing we need to do is import the survey component. So say import survey from, and then this is the at symbol stands in for the source and that's actually defined in the webpack configuration. You can see that that's defined in there. Um, component slash survey and we don't need to include the dot view on the file names. The dot view is sort of implied and it knows to look at those dot view files. Um, we'll go ahead and leave the to do for the secret component import here because we haven't made that yet. So we still will need to do that. But we can um, add the survey route definition. So uh, that survey route is going to say path and the path will be slash survey. The name will be survey and the component will be survey, right? So, uh, so that works. We, um, we can save our code and we would expect not to see anything change here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and refresh the page because we have some things that can't quite be hot loaded with the routing. Um, I'll clear our, our message here so that we can see exactly what's going on. Um, but we haven't actually added the router link yet. So let's go ahead and put that into home before we test it again. So we're going to use the router link element and that takes a two attribute. This is provided um, as part of view router. Uh, and the two place that we want to link to is survey. And we're going to use the name of the route to link to survey. We're not going to actually, this isn't actually a URL. This is the name of the route. So we don't have to worry about slashes or hash marks or anything like that. We can just use the name. And if we ever change the URL later on, this link will still work because it's going to generate the link by going and looking up the name of the URL and then popping in whatever path we have defined over here in this file here. So, um, so that should, uh, that should work effectively. Now we can, uh, go ahead and do another test where we try to fill in all of our data here and then hit submit. And now you notice that we get the thank you page plus we get the click here and it's linked. And you can see in the location that's popping up that it's actually linking to where the survey is. So we click on the survey and we end up on the survey page and we see this new member survey but you can notice that there's questions and stuff here but it's not quite right like we don't have options here and everything. So now we just need to figure out how are we going to put everything into this survey view. Uh, so let's go enhance that component. So we have a lot of similar to do's here. The first thing, set up the proper V on directive to handle the form submission. So we're going to do V on and we know that that's submit dot prevent so that we prevent the default handlers from executing. Um, and then we know too, because we looked earlier that there's a validate form uh, method here. So we're going to use that validate form method to actually handle 
uh, the form submission. Uh, then we want to add the error message that to be displayed. Um, I'm actually going to go over here and just copy this paragraph because we can use the same thing. Um, and I'm just going to paste it right over this to do so that we have that error. And down here we can notice that we do have a show error value that is defined in the data object and it is initialized to false. So that's great. So that error should not show right now. So if we save this and check in on our page here at the survey, no differences, which is what we expect to see so far. Um, no errors either, which is great. <laughs> um, the next thing, it asks us to add the proper V model to this input element. So this is the input for the Q1 and the V model is just Q1. Uh, we know that because if we look down here, we have all of the questions are initialized so that we can use them in the template. So Q1, Q2, Q3, all the way through Q5. So, so we're gonna um, use those names for the models. Now with Q2, we actually have a slightly different thing. We need to create a loop to duplicate the label element and the structures it contains for each item in the language options array. So if we scroll down here, we have this array called language options and each one of these options is a little object that has a text and a value. So it says JavaScript and the value is JS, Python and the value is PY. So this is a really common situation when you get data back from an API or something like that where you have just these arrays of these little options and you've got kind of a display version and then like a data version that you want to track and you're going to we want to use these um, to generate these uh, check boxes that we could check um, now we're going to put the v4 on the loop because we want to to make sure or on the label because we want the label to wrap all of these check boxes okay um, so we want each individual checkbox wrapped in a label, all right? And that label, that will mean that, that like if a person clicks the label, then it will check the box. So I'm going to put language in language options. That, that could also be like language choice or it could just be choice in language options or something like that, right? Um, and then if we read on the, on the input here, we say, see, set the proper V model directive and use V bind value to set the value for the checkbox. So that's actually two different directives that we need to set on this input element here. So the first one is V model, which is just going to be Q2. And the way that checkboxes work, they can all be um, have the same name or they can all be attached to the same value with V model. And if so, then they, they can create just an array. And we can notice down here that Q2 and Q3 are actually initialized to empty arrays. So th both of those questions will be able to accept multiple checkbox answers. Um, then we can use vbind colon value. So we're going to bind the value attribute of this input to language dot value. Because down here, the two properties that, this, that each of these objects are going to have are text and value. And text is the, the display version and value is the version that we want to like save in the database or whatever. So, um, so we're going to use that language.value for the value. And that takes care of this to do. And then here we have a to do to output the, display, the text to display this option. So, the way that checkboxes work is, I, I think, at least in English, where we read left to right, um, the, the checkbox label looks better if it is to the right of the checkbox itself. So um, what we're going to do is just output language.text, and that's going to show us the pretty text um, for each of these options. And so if we, uh, oh, sorry. If we look at this at our page now, you can see that we have all of these language options available here. Um, if we look at our view tab, we can see that um, our Q2 array is, has zero items in it. But if I click JavaScript, then you notice that the array now has an item that says JS. 
If I click Python, it now has JS and Py. PHP gets added to the array. If I uncheck it, they get removed from the array here. So this is a really, um, the obviously View DevTools makes it really nice and we can see exactly what's happening with our data when the user uh, selects or deselects these options. Um, we can also see, if we just inspect this with the regular HTML inspector here, we can see that we have the label um, and then the label wraps the input. The input, we can see that the value has been assigned properly. So this is JavaScript. Um, we can see here the value has been assigned to pi properly. So we knew that that data was coming through properly from the view dev tools, but we can also verify it just with the normal uh, inspection of the HTML there. So that's great. Let's go ahead and move on to the question three, where we're basically going to do the same thing. So once again, we want to make a loop, uh, but this time we want to go through topic options. So we'll say topic in topic options. And that gets rid of this to do. And then um, for this, the V model is going to be Q3. And we're going to once again bind the value to topic.value. And obviously, we have to use the word topic to reference the value as it comes through this loop. Um, but otherwise, structurally, it's, it's the same as the previous one. Um, and then, of course, we want to output the text. So we're going to say topic.text as the label. And if we save this, then we should see here that we now have all of these topics. So what other topics interest you? All of these topics interest me. So, uh, and if we click, we can uh, view that here for Q3, there's SEO, there's ops, there's media. If we select some from Q2, we still have that working. If we type in um, how long have you been building websites, um, you notice that that works, right? So, um, so that's good. But of course, we haven't yet set up uh, Q4, and we haven't set up Q5. So those are not changing. So let's go ahead and, and finish those out. Um, so for Q4, we really just need a V model directive on this text area. So we'll just set that to Q4. And then we're done with that. And then here, same deal on the select tag. We just want to say V model equals Q5. And that should take care of recording the user selection for Q5. So now, if we come through here and we type hello world, then we can see that Q4 is filling in. And if we select spaces like every sane person should, <laughs> then Q5 uh, will be populated with spaces. So that's that's excellent. Um, the next thing that we need is to actually uh, work on the validation here. So let's go into validate form. And we need to validate, again, just a set of rules. We want to validate all of them at once. So we're going to use a big conditional to do that. So we'll say if. And then we'll just say uh, Q1, it must not be blank, so not equal to blank. And Q2 uh, dot length. So we want to make sure that they've selected at least one thing from question two. So we want the length of Q2 to be greater than zero. And same thing with Q3. We want the length of Q3 to be greater than zero. And then for Q4, we want to make sure that it's not blank. And Q5, we just want to make sure that they've selected something. So as long as it's not blank, then um, we'll be OK. Oops, I forgot to wrap it in parentheses. Um, and then we have our success conditions. We're going to say console.log form is valid and uh, we want to then look it says if the data is valid use the router to move the data to the secret page um, I'm going to put that to do back in here and I'm just going to leave that 
say form is valid on the console. Um, the the else condition where the form would not be valid, I'm gonna say console.log form is not valid. And then uh, it says that we should show um, the error message. So I'm gonna go ahead and say this dot show error equals true. Um, so I'll save this uh, just so that we can test out and verify if we're actually seeing any validation. So here we go, we have no, no validation or nothing filled in at all. So if we hit submit, um, uh oh, Q2 is not defined. Oh, I made a mistake. Ah, I see my mistake now. Of course, all of these need the word this before them. So let's go ahead and I'll clear my messages and then try submitting again. Form is not valid. That is true. And we also, we see the error here, so that's great. Um, now, if we uh, put in uh, some stuff that we like, um, we will then be able to submit and we can see that the form is valid. Excellent. So we're basically solid on this survey, but now we need to make our secret component and the secret view. So to do that, uh, we're going to go ahead and make a new file here in components. And I'm just gonna copy the home view and paste it in here. And then we can just get rid of a bunch of stuff. We don't need any methods uh, because this is just going to be super simple. Uh, we don't need any data, but I, I'll go ahead and make a, a message here and I'll say, always check your dev tools. That's my, that's my advice to, to new web developers. So I will just then, um, Add in, I'll call this secret for the class now, although I'm not, I'm not even actually using that. And we're going to delete all of the content from the template. And I'm just going to put a big H1 there and have it output the message. And that's it. And that's all that we'll have on this page. Then I have to save um, the actual uh, file. So I'm going to call this secret.view. And notice that that went right in there under components. And so basically I have a very simple view. It has um, just an H1 on it that has the message. And then it has uh, um, these things. Actually, under the H1, I wanna put a list that I can use for navigation. And I'm going to say, I wanna put in some router links And I'm gonna go ahead and copy these this list item. So that that way we can click back and forth um, to each of these things. Uh, so that might be fun. So now if we try to go to the secret page in the browser, we won't see anything here because this page is trying to render a router view and we haven't actually defined this in the router definitions yet. So we need to go in here and we actually need to uh, do the same thing that we did for the survey where we say import secret and we're gonna use the at symbol again and then components slash secret and no dot view again. Um, then we're going to basically, we can just actually copy this definition here. We can get rid of these comments because we don't need them. And we can just change this to secret and secret. So, and secret. There we go. So now, 
we should be able to uh, see what happens. Oh, but look, we made a typo and caused a syntax error there. Huh. Thank goodness for Vue Dev Tools and the the excellent setup. So we'll say from. And now, here we go. And we get our secret. Always check your Dev Tools, and we can see our links. So that'll take us to home, and that'll take us to survey. Excellent. So this is the the way that we complete this project. We now have have completed all of the goals on the basic under the basic requirements. So if we come here, we did all this. We made the form. We used V show. Um, we we added the survey. We used V four to do some looping. Oh, we need to push. When you complete the survey, that's what we forgot to do. So let's do that really quick. Um, so now, when when it's valid, we need to use um, the the router to move the user to the secret page. Now the the dollar router is a special uh, you know it's accessing that directive from within our our component logic, and to, to get to it, we need to call it this router dot push, and then we can just put in the name of a route that we want to push to. So this is the survey route that we want to push to. So we can say save. And now we can try out our, um, let's try out our application from the beginning here. So I can see that we didn't go to the right location here. So our, our URLs, oh yeah, we can see that the URLs are not actually rendering correctly. I think we made a typo in this template. I see, yeah. Okay, so we can use the two and then use the paths, and the paths are just what comes after the hash, and that, that works just fine. Um, that would work totally fine. We also can use the bind directive and then we could actually um, provide a little object um, that would uh, describe exactly where we wanted this link to go. And so we can see we have it done both ways here now. And if we look here, when we hover over home, now we see that that link is correct. And when we hover over survey, that link is also correct. So we, we can use whichever method works best for us. We can click back to home and we'll get the home. That's great. For now, let's click to the survey and let's let's try filling out the survey and we'll um, we'll put in we'll do this and it should move us to the secret route. So let's see if this happens. So it is not working. There must be an error here. And it's that we're actually just pushing ourselves back to the survey view instead of the secret view. We need to be pushing to the secret view. So now we should uh, be able to fill this out and see that we will move to the secret view. Yay, we did move to the secret view. Our links are still working properly. We've got this sucker done. Um, so, uh, barring some uh, typos on my part and some some bad attention on my part, um, what we can see is that uh, we've got we've got basically a functional site here where we can come in, we can fill out a uh, sign up form that does some basic validation. It will take us to a new user survey and um, will allow us to fill in the new user survey and then submit that and then we'll show us a little secret and give us some linkage back. Uh, that's everything for this multi-view app practice. Hopefully you had fun uh, playing with this uh, little project and I encourage you to explore more features of 
uh, view router, of the router links, of working with forms. You can take this basic project and probably expand it, make it possibly relevant to something that you're trying to do, uh, try to mock up something that you could see doing for your, your other projects, your other interests. So have fun with this and uh, good luck. Don't forget there's a link to Practical JavaScript 2 Building Applications in the description of this video. And I look forward to seeing everybody's forks on GitHub. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.